Jeez, oh. Oh, shit. You're not going to believe it, man. I'm oh, probably not, no. No, no, I don't think you will, mate, because, look, it's going to sound crazy, but I was genuinely threatened by a calendar on my way to, the, to, to filming today. Oh, yeah? Yeah, mate, it said my days were numbered. It's a bit odd. Anyways, what do we have today? What, what's the mystery? Today, we have the disappearance or the murder of a man called Peter Falconio. Joanne Lees endured the most terrifying night of her life. Peter Falconio's body still hasn't been found. She and her boyfriend were attacked by a gunman. Joanne escaped, but her boyfriend, Peter Falconio, has not been seen since. Joanne Lees, she was very uh, determined about what she wanted. I couldn't imagine a more frightening and intimidating experience. Nagging questions persist. Among them, did Bradley John Murdoch get a fair trial? And this happened very recently, 2001, kind of recent. Nah, bro, I've got some terrible news for you. Everyone here is thinking, oh, it's in the 2000s, it's recent. Bro, that was 20 years ago. Stop reminding. Oh. That's depressing. Well, that's just ruined my holiday, and I'm not even on it. Thanks for that shit. Let me bust it wide open, because this one happened on the 14th of July, 2001. I just clocked. Yeah? That's a day after my birthday. Wow. How old, and, would, how old would you have turned It's then? in Australia, so technically, it probably happened on your birthday. So I was out there, you know, probably at Toby, Toby Carvery, you know, yeah. in a playpen. Donny was playpen. Yeah. Hey, I'm pretty sure you'd been eight here. Were you still in a playpen at eight? Yeah, you know, in the in the you know the bit with the slides and stuff. Okay, like the like that bit that you're not quite in the ball pits where like the the kid kids are, but you're in like the more mature bit with the, the slides. I've the adrenaline I've rush. I've leveled up. Okay. Anyway, imagine this. We're in the Northern Territory of Australia. Duh. Have you ever been to Australia? Too many spiders. There are hella spiders in there and snakes, especially when you're out in the outback. Ooh. And this is all about a dis disappearance mm -hmm. of one man, Peter Falconio. And now look, okay, we're gonna be 100% honest with you. You know, this case is solved, but we're not quite convinced it's solved. We no have way. got a lot of questions about this and we're gonna run you through it all the way from the top to the bottom. And then you guys can let us know in the comments whether you agree with us or not. Let me give you a couple details mm. just to start the whole thing off. So we've got Peter Falconio. He mm -hmm. is a British tourist. He's 28 at the time and he disappears in a remote part of Australia near a place called Barrow Creek. Okay, he was yeah. traveling with his girlfriend, Joanne Lees. Now, at this moment, he is presumed dead. Right. Okay? That everyone thinks he's dead. So they found his body. Most people, anyway. No, they haven't. So there's no body. But that's what we're here for. Ah, oh, we're gonna find this body. Or maybe- Probably not. No, we, we, yeah, but, we are in the UK, but you know, we're, we're gonna solve this case. Joanne, the girlfriend, yes. and Peter, they were actually traveling a bit of Southeast Asia. You yeah. know, they were doing Cambodia, uh -huh. Thailand. A lot of people from the UK, they like to make that trip as well. I've been over there. I've, I've seen You've those You've been lines. everywhere. I have, I have. Uh, lovely place to go, but unfortunately, um, it all ended in the outback of Australia. Now, we're gonna run you through a little timeline of what exactly went down. July 14th, 2001, they're driving north from a place called Alice Springs. Mm. They then decide to stop off, you know, get a bit of fuel and okay. share a joint of cannabis. No, tell me, tell me these lot were not indulging in the devil's lettuce. Say it ain't so, Chip. It's so. Anyway, after that, Peter then takes over the driving. An hour and a half later, yep. it's 7.30 p.m. Okay. Right? And what happens is they're driving on, uh, on a highway called Stewart's Highway. So to all the Stewarts out there, you have your own highway, right? It's called the Stewarts Highway. And what happens is another car comes up, comes up alongside them, yeah. right? And, and signals to them. You know, they're in their like camper van. It's like an orange van. It's quite a nice looking van if I must say so myself. Anyways, pulls up to him and says, Point starts signaling to them that there's something wrong with their exhaust. Okay. Right? You got something wrong. So they pull over, right? Peter jumps out. Peter thinks, right, let me go see what's happening with this exhaust. Obviously, the car that signaled over it as well, he pulled over just to see, you know, maybe they wanted to help out, whatever it might be. So Peter jumps out, 
and goes round to the back of the uh, back of the car, and he needs to see if there's anything wrong. So he tells um, Joanne, "Yo, quickly rev the engine. Let me see. Let me see if there is anything wrong with this, right?" And as that happens, right, a large bang sound goes off. Okay. Not looking good. It's, it, it, I'll be honest, Chip, it, it doesn't get any better. What happens is then the guy that pulled them over and that sort of signaled to them knocks on the window with a silver pistol, right? Mm -hmm. And at that point, Peter had never was never seen again. Joanne then gets kidnapped. She gets tied up and you know those uh, cable ties, those uh -huh. black cable ties, and she gets chucked into the back of a ute. That's what. That's another word for just like sort of like a a, a van pickup style thing. We'll have a picture for you guys, so you guys will be able to see. And as uh, supposedly as um, the guy is now dealing with Peter's body, she manages to wriggle out of the van and run away into there's like you know once they pulled over there's like all those like Australian bushes. Again, we'll we'll get a picture up so you guys can sort of envision this. But these are some small little shrubs. Like a desert bush though. Yeah, desert lots of de desert bushes is it essentially, right? Now what uh, then is claimed to have happened is the guy then goes, Oh crap, she's got loose and goes and tries to find her in the bushes. Now according to her, he came very close to her three times. But then eventually he sacks off. He says, right, I can't find her. I'm leaving. He put, it, it, supposedly, Peter's in the back of that uh, car and he drives off, never to be seen again. It's a wrap. Then a few hours later at 1 a.m., a man named Vince. We only know his name's Vince because, you know, after everything come out, we found out his name was Vince, all right? A Vince, a truck driver, pulls over because Joanne had got out and sees her, sees that she's obviously, uh, she had a few wounds and things like that, goes, uh, uh, picks her up, takes her back, washes her off, calls the police. Barrow Creek proprietor Les Pilton and his partner Helen Jones looked after Joanne and called the police immediately. The police arrive and that's that. From there, we need to talk a little bit about who, what, when, where, how. Okay, because where is Peter? The body, the body was never found. Why? I've, I've got so many questions. Okay, so we need to talk about the crime scene. Mm. Obviously, all that's gone down, but when it comes to the actual crime scene, there's pretty much nothing there. There's no gunshot residue, no brain matter, anything, no drag marks. Yeah. Nothing like that. No shell casings from no, the gun. No shell casings from the gun. Um, eight hours later, they put Roblox uh, Roblox into place and expert trackers could find like no sign of footprints other than those of Joanne's. Okay. So, so you would think John. you would think there's gonna be, you know, if her footprints are there, then where where's the attacker's footprints? Now it's important to note, right? There was a small pool of blood mm -hmm. covered in dirt, right? That was there. So but that was it. Now if it was a gunshot, right? We've all seen it, we've seen it in movies. If someone shoots someone, it's it's a splatter. It sprays across everywhere. It's not just like a small pool of blood yeah. with a bit of dirt on it. Nope. That would that just doesn't line up and it doesn't make sense. Not only that, but instantly I've got a few questions about the footprints. Only Joanne Lees are there. What about this other guy that supposedly went and helped out with this exhaust? The mm -hmm. one that tapped on the window with the pistol. Joanne was asked to describe what the attacker looked like. And what she said was that he had straggly hair with a Mexican style mustache. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a Mexican style mustache before? No, you kind of do. Right Th now. This is, this is not a Mexican style mustache. It's an attempt at one. I know you're trying it. I was, I was actually, you know. Caught in 64K. But yeah, she said that it was shoulder length hair. Um, he wore a hat and he looked between the ages of 40 and 45. She obviously described the car. She said it was like that white ute car, maybe even a Land Rover. Um, and then not only that, but she obviously admitted later on to being quite, uh, she, quite high, right? So she obviously, she later admitted to smoking the cannabis, right? But she said it was, it was pretty strong. That shit oh, hit different. Oh, she had that good stuff. That good <laughs> Australian outback kush. That lemon haze, baby. That lemon <laughs> haze. And so what she claims is like, she remembers some things, but not everything. Okay, that will right. make sense. 
Yeah, it would. Yeah, you know what? It would make sense. Yeah. Um, but it's also, I'm just saying, it is quite convenient. So you're probably thinking, in fact, I know you're thinking this. CCTV footage. Now That's we exactly are, what I was thinking, Chip. We Thank are in you. the middle of the outback, so I'm mm -hmm. not sure the desert is quite normally the place for that. However, the police did find CCTV footage of a man that they believed mm -hmm. to be the attacker. Now, we take this footage, show it to Joanne, and Joanne actually says that she believed that the guy in the CCTV footage was a little bit too old to actually be the attacker. So, quite strange, she, you know. So she, she said, yeah, it ain't him. It, yeah, she said that it isn't him. Anyway, the man in the footage is believed to be a man called Bradley Murdoch. Right. Yeah, now, today, this footage, it wouldn't stand up at all. Really, it's yeah. not good enough? No, it's not good enough. It's, you could pick it apart. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's problems with it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It, it, nowadays, it wouldn't last in court. The, the the defense, whoever it is, would literally pick it apart. So it's interesting. You know, technology I mean, has I, come a long uh, way, my and friend. And she, she said herself yeah. that he looked too, too old. old. Enter Greg Dick. What a name. What an unfortunate name, some would say. Yeah, piss, right? piss poor. Right, we don't need to attack him that much. Oh, yeah, you get it, Greg. Dick. Oh. Bro, this is why I bring you on this show. We already show. know. Joanne had always stated that they drove past the Illyrian Roadhouse, okay? But Greg Dick and two of his staff members claimed otherwise. They claimed that she had actually come in. She came into the place, okay. right? And she got herself a toasty. Ooh. What toasty would you usually get? Ham and cheese. Uh, but when you get a toasty, it should always be ham and cheese. There should be no other Thank answer Thank you for there. respecting my answer. This is a, a well-respected member of the community, Greg Dick, okay? He's worked there for 42 years. Oh, okay, wow. okay. I like um, that. And he said it's very easy to pick out the tourists from the local community. He even said that uh, Joanne was even looking at the maps, uh, planning out the rest of their trip, that sort of stuff. Classic touristy type yeah, of business, course. right? Um, but what's interesting is someone had come in later, a little bit just just after Joanne. So Joanne was there. Uh, a geezer walks in, right? And uh, he had a dog with him, and he got himself uh, a bite. In fact, it's rumored that he went for a pie, right? What, what, the dog went for the pie? No, 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 no. The bloke that walked in went for the pie, all right? Oh. I don't think the dog looked at the menu and said, I'll take the pie, right? You don't uh, know that. You weren't there. It's tr you, no, you're absolutely right. I wasn't there. And we're all going off of what Greg Dick says here, right? And now he said that Joanne actually goes to speak to this man. And they spoke as if they had known each other. Ooh. Okay. And the guy said he was off to the police waterhole. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the hell a police waterhole is. But put it this way. That guy in that roadhouse said he was off there. Okay. So him and Joanne, they were chatting. Now, what's interesting is that Greg Dick was asked to look at a photo lineup of people uh -huh. and asked to identify who that man was, right? And in that photo lineup was Bradley Murdoch. Now, Greg Dick said that wasn't the guy that she was speaking to. It was someone entirely different. So not only that, right? Not only does the, now we're starting to think, okay, okay, maybe she was just talking to someone random. But Joanne denies the entire thing happening. She said she just drove past it, right? Mm. She said she never spoke to a guy in there. She said she didn't even go there and get a toasty. Would Greg Dick lie? Why? Why would Greg Dick lie? I mean, I think that, that, that rhymes. Maybe it was Greg Dick. I think he's a very old, fragile man. I don't think... He I don't think he, he would do that. Now, you're probably wondering at this point, who is Bradley Murdoch? Tell so, me more, Chip. Let I'm me give you some details. To know. Is this guy the Donny? Well, anyway, he's an Australian man. Okay. Uh, he had quite the, you know, tough upbringing. He left school early. He was actually really involved in drug smuggling. He was in a biker gang at 15 years old, and he had a lot of white supremacist tendencies and also a racist tattoo. So you kind of get the... Picture he's not, he's not coming off great. And, no. and there is actually another little fact. Yeah, um, this guy uh, was actually already been to, to jail or prison for 15 months. Um, and that was for shooting or dr say, drunkenly shooting um, at an indigenous um, Australian rules football match. So this guy isn't clean by any means. Like we said, into drug smuggling, cannabis that is, right? Um, not only that, but, you know, he has a previous history of some pretty crazy shit, yeah. if I'm perfectly honest with you. I mean, you. you join a biker gang at 15, it's not looking good. It's not, not looking, looking good. No. No. One of the biggest reasons why Bradley Murdoch is the main suspect in this case all comes down 
to the DNA, mm -hmm. right? Now, there's a lot of talk about the DNA. Um, also, the fact that it was done, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, not only that, but some of the methods that was used would not stand anymore in court. And even back then, some of the methods and DNA that was used in court um, actually wouldn't have even stood back then in some jurisdictions in Australia. Unfortunately for him, he was the only bit of DNA that they could tag it to. Oh. So um, no, it, does, it doesn't look great. And it's safe to say that the, the when it comes to DNA and you're in court during trial, things like that, um, juries tend to have this sort of uh, preconception that if there's DNA at a crime scene, it's almost like, yeah, they did it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, they tie it into the idea of guilt. Of, yeah, yeah, instantly. And we're gonna go a little bit more into the DNA of this and some of the research and, and stuff about it because to be perfectly honest with you, it's not all that convincing. So there was two big problems with um, the DNA testing. Now, right. the DNA from Dr. Fetcher was found to contaminate the manacles. So the manacles to, the, I mean, I've never heard of manacles before, but yeah, essentially same. it's the um, the black cable ties Yes, and, uh, uh, that were used. Yeah, and so. once it had been recognized that they'd been contaminated, contaminated, sorry, you cannot use that later on. It's done. You know, it's Once it's contaminated, out. it's a wrap. Yes, okay? it's, it's useless. But, also... But but they did actually use those. Yes, yeah, so that's, still well, that's one them. of the major yeah. problems. Yeah. Another big problem, senior policewoman, she took the manacles into um, a room with Murdoch when he was in prison, which sounds absolutely crazy for a start, right? Why would you take a bit of evidence, an exhibit from the crime team, and take it into the room? She said that she planned to show the manacles to Murdoch, which yeah. I'm not really sure about why, but she didn't even end up showing them. The DNA testing on the van and the manacles was something known as low copy number method, which right. was actually really controversial. And the reason for that is because even breathing on a sample may contaminate it substantially enough to render the final profile unusable. So it's not very reliable. Yeah, and it's, the, the way it works is she's obviously had a tiny bit of DNA yep. on it, right? And they've just amplified it and amplified it t 10 times, 20 times, no, amplified it loads to the point where, like you said, even just a little breath on it or whatever, will just completely change the entire final profile. And that's why so many places don't allow that particular method of DNA testing, mm -hmm. but in this particular case, they allowed it. So make of that what you will. Mm -hmm. Hold tight channel four, because they went above and beyond, right? They actually reenacted what happened on that oh. night. And again, they wanted to focus on the DNA. So what they did was they recreated the whole thing. And those, you know, in the actual case, there was only a little bit of DNA found on Joanna of Bradley Murdoch. But what they did was they recreated the whole thing. And at the end of it, what they found was that the DNA, if, if someone actually had done what Joanna claims to have happened, the DNA would have been all over the person. Not just a little bit, a tiny bit here or a little bit there. Like that could have literally been passed on anyway. Like, you know, I touch the desk, you come in, you touch the desk later. Okay, well you could have had, do you know, do you know uh -huh. what I mean? Yep. So if someone had actually done, you know, put her in the back, cable tied her, all that stuff, the DNA would have been all over her. Starting to sound like it never happened. Well, look, Chip, you, I don't like how you're jumping to conclusions. Let's continue on. Now, Joanne and Pia actually visited a place called the Red Rooster about 1, 1.30 p.m. Murdoch had also visited this place. He went to buy some chicken nuggets for his dog. As you can know, that dog gets treated better than I do. Right? <laughs> as you do. Anyway, even if Murdoch had like a minuscule cut or injury, yeah. and maybe he placed his hand down or sat down on a chair, that DNA could have rubbed off rubbed onto Joanne, and that could explain why she had a little bit of his DNA on her That's shoulder right. blade. So in 2007, there was an appeal, um, but the court actually, unfortunately for Bradley, said that there is no suggestion that the appealant, so mm -hmm. Bradley, um, was bleeding or had done anything that might cause him to bleed prior to entering the Red Rooster store. Now, they don't I mean, know. It could have been yeah, a paper cut. It could have been. It could have been literally, absolutely anything. But look, that's what they had decided. Okay, yeah. Chip. And who are we to argue with them? No, no one. Let's talk about another possible theory. Okay, could I'm Falconio have ran away? That's what Dodgy Pete reckons could have happened. They used You're to, not joking, by the way. The guy, the guy is called him Dodgy, Dodgy Pete. Pete. Anyway, he used to. They claim, he claimed that they worked together for about two years, yeah. and at some point they were looking at life insurance scams together. 
So, Whoa. you know. Okay, so it this runs one. away, cashes out on life insurance. Bread Big season. money, baby. Bread Big season, money. Bro. And I, I got a quote from uh, Dodgy Pete, yeah. you know, <laughs> the trustworthy Dodgy Pete. He says, There is no doubt in my mind that Falconio could. So he, he, what he's saying is he yeah. could he could have done the life insurance, yeah. no problem. You know what? I quite like this theory, you know. It's very interesting because, look, the police didn't set up the roadblocks, they didn't set up all this sort of stuff until about eight hours after mm -hmm. it all happened. Now, eight hours is plenty of time to get away, to go as far as you possibly want to go, and even is it if you want, if you back? wanted to, you could even leave the country in eight hours. But they're in the middle of the outback, right? Mate, you can get to an airport and you can you can well, sack it foot. off. He's on foot. But then, but then I think unless it whipped out a little mini moped. From well, the no, boot. well, that's no, he hasn't <laughs> done that. But I'm saying, what if they were chatting to that guy? That remember that Joanne was talking to outside or oh. at that last place, the roadhouse. Yes. And what if they were like, okay, meet us here at this time. He, he's gonna, uh, Peter's gonna get in your whip and you're gonna whip him all the way to X Y Z. Get him on a flight. Get him on a plane. Get I like. Him on a, I like this one. Uh, get him on a boat. I don't know. Something like that. The thing it, is, though, it would explain why there's barely any DNA at the actual scene as well. Yeah, and they've tried like it's a pretty like poor effort at making yeah, like a crime a, scene. And then, like and then they scene. do a freeway split on the money. Back to Bradley Murdoch. Now, he had a mate. He had a business partner actually Ooh. called James Heppy. Now these guys like ran the, a cannabis company wow. in South Australia. Entrepreneurs. Do you want to give them that? Yeah, sure. Let's give them that title. Look, cannabis entrepreneurs, right? Um, and what happened was, you know, there was a bit of a dispute between um, Heppy and, or, or James Heppy and uh, Bradley Murdoch, and there was some missing cash. And look, they weren't on the best of terms. Now, what ends up happening is Heppy actually gets done for smuggling, right? Ooh. So he gets arrested. Okay. And he's done. Now they started asking him questions about Murdoch, and in particular the crime as well. And what he said was that, uh, well, what he claimed, what James Heppy claimed was that Murdoch, back in 2001, said that, said to him, you know, it's very easy to hide a body. You just bury it in a spoon drain. What's a spoon drain? Well, let me tell you, mate. It's an area of mud by the side of the road. So why is that okay. make it easier to hide a body? I think, mate, I think it's just one of them Australian things. I don't think, we, we probably ain't got any spoon drains in the UK. Uh, not only that, but James Heppy also claimed that he remembers Murdoch playing around with cable ties. Oh. I'm, okay, look, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. But I just think it's a very weird thing to, to remember about someone. When you're running a cannabis business, there's so many other things to think about. But you just remember this one time way back when, when he was playing around with cable ties. I'm pretty sure in the Outback, cable ties are used for a lot of things. Yeah, I no. just feel like he was maybe forcing it a bit too much. And the reason why he might have been forcing it is because, interestingly enough, when Heppy appeared in court to testify, he got his get out of jail free card. Now, Ooh. what I'm trying to say is- Yeah, because he dubbed him in. Because he was willing to testify and say all this stuff, he said, we're not gonna do you for the smuggling, mate. You're good to go. Now, I think that's a bit sus, to be honest with you. I think that, you know what, if you're going down, you know, you, you might tell a little porky about a guy you fell out with that, that, you know, stole a little bit of cash from you. Obviously, Bradley Murdoch, when he was arrested, wasn't having it. No way. Nope, so he gave his mate a ring, and this is what the phone call said. I definitely did not do it. I'm not a fucking murderer. Now the trial. The trial begins on the 17th of October, 2005. Murdoch has pleaded not guilty to the murder of Falconio and assaulting and attempting to kidnap Joanne. Okay. So he's not guilty. He's okay. saying, look, I ain't having I, this. I, I ain't done this. I That's what he's saying. Next up, Joanne Lees. Okay, now this bit is uh, quite interesting um, because what she essentially did was there was obviously a photo lineup and Murdoch was in the lineup and she identified Murdoch as the guy. Yeah. Couple things to point out about this though, right? Is that previously, so, so she, sorry, she did that in 2002. Now, uh, previously the BBC had put up a picture of Bradley uh, Murdoch saying, is this the guy? Is this the guy that did it? Whatever. Now, she will have seen that photo before and it influenced her when she's picking someone out of that lineup. Yes. Right, so she's already seen like an article and she's seen this guy's picture before already being attached to the case. So when she's actually asked to pick someone out from the lineup, she already knows that it's a 
a pretty safe bet that that could be him. Now, the reason why this is a little bit weird as well is you remember that CCTV footage, right? And how she said she saw the CCTV and the guy that was supposedly Murdoch in that CCTV and she actually said, nah, that guy looks a little too old. Yep. Yet when it came to the photo lineup, Changed her mind. Cha switched it up. Mm -hmm. A few different questions there. I it's think it's good. a bit weird, right, that they've asked her to do this photo lineup in 2002 after there had already been a lot of media surrounding it, after suspects' names were already thrown around, pictures of suspects were already thrown around. It doesn't make the photo lineup very credible. Murdoch was believed to have left Alice Springs at the time, which would be consistent with him being in Barrow Creek when the, you know, the murder and the kidnapping when it went down, when it took place. The police found traces, uh, trace of Murdoch's DNA on the manacles, the homemade yeah. handcuffs, whatever, and yeah. obviously on Alice, uh, Alice, sorry, Joanne's shoulder. Yeah. So that was so enough. We knew that. that was actually enough, though. That was all that they but needed to charge But we already went through the, the DNA, bro. The DNA isn't good enough. Well, according to them, it was. Even Channel 4's reenactment of it proved that the DNA, it, it needed to be all over them. So you reckon or it's it dodgy, been. dodgy police miss this or? Look, I just think, right, this guy was, um, you know, a drug smuggler. He had a bad history. The police wanted to nail him, Easy, right? easy, they, easy to pin easy on Easy target, man. Yeah. This guy was, obviously he's not a great guy. And we're not saying he is, you know, a great guy and he's, you know, uh, whatever. But do I think that he did this? If he did, there's, there, there really isn't enough good evidence against it. The weirdest thing to me, right, about this whole thing is where is the body? Is this guy still alive? He's in a spoon drain, mate. He's, he's in the spoon drain. He could drain. be in a spoon drain. He could be, I hope they went and checked all the spoon drains. I, th I think I'm leaning towards more of the fact that he is alive. I think he's it's alive. giving me like complete Tupac vibes. He's on an island somewhere. Peter Falconio. He's with Tupac, if actually. He, if you're watching this, We'd like to have you on the podcast. Call us up. Ring our bell. We've got a line here. It's not put in, but... Look, look, no, do you know what? And, and we'll do this anonymously. Just drop us a little DM on Instagram. Yeah, we'll, we, make, we'll make your voice up really deep and stuff. Yeah, and we'll make you look like a member of like, Anonymous or something. Yeah. I like the idea of when you spoke earlier about how Joanna and the guy were in that restaurant speaking. Yeah. She completely denies the whole thing. But our resident, who's been around for 42 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gr he, Mr. No, Greg Dick, by Greg the way. Greg Dick, no reason to lie. I'm thinking, yes, them two mm -hmm. are talking. Mm -hmm. They've planned to, you know, take take Falconio away. Let's get this life insurance money. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they cashed on that, I don't know. Maybe they couldn't because of the media heat. Either way, he, like you said, he could have got out of the country in no time. For real. Could be hiding. It's Joanne Lees, I've... I'm a little bit sus of her, okay? And the, the main thing I want to talk about, right? And we didn't mention it right at the beginning, but I want to talk about it now. It's the bushes. We showed you guys a picture of what those bushes look like. How are you hiding in there? And not being seen. And not being seen. It's not a big British bush. Yeah, it sounds We're like, talking sounds like about an Australian cat. desert bush. Yep. If you just looked around, you don't even have to be told. You could see someone. Not even that far. She said she was in a pretty close proximity to it. She's she's cable tied. Yep. Bro, I just think Joanne Lees isn't giving us either the full story or there's something more sus going on. She yeah. said she heard a gunshot. She gun said shot. she hid in the in the bush for five hours. Like that that just sounds like you know extreme cap. Yeah, like she's giving us some serious cap there. Um, the police even doubted her story a little bit, but there is just, because there's no body in this case, it's just so difficult to really come to any conclusion. It's all conclusion. up in the air, really. It really is. Unfortunately for Bradley Murdoch, on the 13th of December, 2005, he was found guilty by a jury in a unanimous verdict and was sentenced to life imprisonment for 28 years with no parole. And when he gets out, he'll be 74 years old. Boy. That is that is not what he was hoping for. No. That is not what he was hoping for. Channel 4 concluded in their documentary about this, uh, said that knowing what we know today, my very firm view is that Bradley John Murdoch would have been found not guilty. 
Okay, so with the so, evidence that they had back then, they were like, yep, that's it, he's guilty, even though it's barely anything. Yeah, now... Today, they, they don't it doesn't run. It doesn't yeah, run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got Phil Cook, truck driver. I don't think he did it because he's not stupid. You've got a big load of drugs on you. You don't go mucking around on the highway, shooting people and kidnapping women. It just doesn't fit. It, it is like out there in the... In the in the broad, no, not mm. quite broad daylight, but you know what I mean. Like it is a, it's not hidden, it's not secretive. Yeah. Anyone could have really but been coming past when this was happening. Dodgier things have happened still. Like yes. you're, you're still, you can't just rule it out because he's not stupid. Yeah, Gary Edmund, a law professor. Now uh, this bloke is actually a bit more uh, on the other side. He reckons that actually there's quite a strong case against Murdoch. It's one thing to have his DNA on a shirt, but then what are the chances the person who's matched that DNA has a gun? Has a dog, has a similar car, and is a similar and is similar to the person in the truck stop video. Ooh, I mean, he's got a point to be fair. He does, but what's interesting is that look, you know, the dog thing. I feel like in Australia, loads of people got dogs. Those cars out there are very common, mm -hmm. right? Um, and yes, the DNA. But we've already spoken a little bit about the DNA. We're not going to go into it. And um, yeah, the fact that he's got a gun. Fair enough. So he's a, he's a drug smuggler. He's probably going to have a gun, right? Yeah. We've got Professor Barry Bo Botcher. Oh, Botcher. You've just botched his last name. Well, I did that. Come on, Anyway, baby. he is a blood specialist, and okay. here's his quote. I do not believe that Bradley Murdoch should have been convicted. In my experience, juries do not really understand DNA evidence, and if DNA is led, the juries simply equate the presence of DNA with guilt. We mentioned that we earlier We did say as that well. earlier. Right, let's talk a little bit about Robert Brown. Okay. Now this bloke said, I don't think anybody killed him. Well, I know for a fact he's still alive unless something happened to him after the day he walked out the shop. But yeah, he's still alive and kicking somewhere. Huh? You're probably wondering who the hell is Robert Brown? Now Robert Brown claimed, right? So after everything had happened, um, he'd obviously seen on the news a picture of Peter Falconio, right? And he claimed a couple days after the supposed murder, that Peter Falcone had actually come into his shop and left. And that's why he says, right, so he had pointed, I think, to his wife, he called his wife over and said, that's the geezer from the news, right? Ooh. But he claims that he had, he had seen him and that's why he is convinced he's still alive. To wrap this all up, it's important that we say that Joanne has profited quite a bit from this situation. She actually accepted 50,000 pounds just for an interview. Yo, someone offer me 50 Gs that for an interview. That is a lot of money. Um, she actually said that the interview was to raise awareness, but you know, whether you believe that, it's a different story. She also came out with a book called No Turning Back. And, and God, uh, only God knows how much she profited off of her book. But it is one of those things, you know, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I've never been in her position. I don't know. W would I create a book about it? Would I have done that interview? I understand obviously wanting to raise awareness. Um, but yeah, there is, you know, there was some monetary gain behind yeah. some of this stuff. Now, make that what you will. What I will say, guys, is that if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button because the fellas' mysteries are going to the moon. Yes. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this case and who you guys think did this. Uh, and what, what was the other thing we got to tell them to do again, Chip? Press the notification bell. That's right. He got it. He got it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next Monday at 6 p.m.